in success and overall stature, Ohio football has never been better. After five straight bowl seasons, 43 wins in that time, and six winning campaigns in the last eight years, the Bobcats are ready for 2014. But initially, at least, it will be a season with a different feel to it. Just by nature in college athletics, every team in every sport has a constantly changing roster. The players that you've come to know and love eventually will leave, and a new class steps in. And so it goes, the wheel keeps spinning. For Ohio football, some of the stars that contributed to such great success are now gone, and a new cast will step in with the opportunity to shine brighter and make the program even better. There's a lot to replace when you lose quarterback Tyler Tettleton, running back Bo Blankenship, and wide receiver Dante Foster. The 405 boys made their home state of Oklahoma proud as Bobcats, as Tett is the all-time leader in passing yards and touchdowns, Bo has the single season mark for rushing yards, and Foster is the all-time leader in receiving touchdowns. From last year alone, Ohio must replace a total of 4,803 individual yards and 33 touchdowns from the trio. Still, in total offense, 2013 broke the string of back-to-back -back seasons of over 400 yards per game of offense. The next man up is most certainly up. At quarterback, that appears to be Darius Vick. The junior from Lincoln, Nebraska started and was part of the Norfolk State win in 2012. He threw an 80-yard bomb for six in the Beef O'Brady's Bowl in December. I don't think people have really seen me actually play how I can play. I, I know Norfolk State, I threw the ball well, but at the same time, I didn't have one rush. And uh, I'm a dual threat quarterback, so I think that's what I can do best. And last season, I was in a kind of a special role where I kind of just ran the ball mostly. So you never seen both at the same time. So I think this year, you'll see the true dual threat come out. If it isn't Vic, it's sophomore J.D. Sprague, who played minor minutes in four games last season. Daz Patterson's coming out party was a homecoming party for him at Tropicana Field. The Tampa area native had 105 total yards and a score in the loss to East Carolina. He's as muscular as a 5'7 guy can be, and he wants to keep flexing this season. I feel like uh, the hard work has been put in this summer. We've, we've all been working hard, but... Uh, I know I, I can speak for myself when I say that I've been, I've been putting in work uh, for these upcoming seasons. Solidly built Tim Edmond figures to have an increased role in the backfield too. Chase Cochran knows his history. He has an appreciation for the past. That's a major part of his education in Athens. And he wants to add to his career totals of 1,066 receiving yards and eight touchdowns as the featured wide receiver this season. It feels good. Fresh, pressure for sure. Uh, to live up to the hype of, of guys like Levon and Dante. Uh, but they've taught me a lot in, in their time here. So it's just trying to take those things that they, you know, some of the things that made them so successful, especially when they were the number one guy, and to, and to kind of implement those into my game in, in terms of just trying to help this team win. Landon Smith, Sebastian Smith, and others will fill out the rest of the wide aerial attack. The tight end position has been occupied by smart and reliable guys in the past. Troy Mangin played in all 13 games as a freshman, caught a touchdown at Akron. At 6'5", he could be a tall, over-the-middle target and good blocker, too. The offense is only as good as the offensive line protects and opens up holes. From center and to the left, the unit remains intact with Lucas Powell, Mike Lucas, and Mike McQueen. The right side has guys that started a few games, but the roles of Darrell Wood and Troy Watson will increase. Ohio was outgained in 2013 after limiting the opposition to less than the Cats gained in the two previous seasons, though they gave up just a tenth of a point more than it scored last year. D leader, cornerback Travis Carey is gone. He's with the Oakland Raiders. But there is reliable talent up front, in the middle, and in the secondary. Terrell Basham, Antoine Crutcher, Brandon Purdom, and Kurt Lasik make up a productive and versatile line. Basham was a freshman All-American, had seven and a half sacks, is on many preseason lists, and wants to be even more of an enforcer this season. First off, I gotta I gotta fix um, my my areas that where I'm weak at, working on really driving those guys back, not letting them drive me back. You know, last year I wouldn't say I was the biggest guy, I definitely wasn't the strongest guy. I worked on that a lot in the offseason though. In the middle, experience returns with Nathan Carpenter, Ben Russell, and Javon Johnson. Carp is a senior. He's played in every game in his first three seasons and has a total of 149 tackles. He's a defensive jack-of-all-trades. 
His versatility and consistency makes him so valuable. Obviously, you know, I'm highly undersized to play college football here at a Division I level. And uh, so, you know, a lot of people don't think much of me when I'm out there. And, uh, you know, that's how, I, that's how I sneak up on teams. So, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be able to make some plays there and at some quality times there. And hopefully I can continue that this year. He could drift back into secondary coverage, too, an area that Ohio also has experience in with Devin Bass, Josh Kristoff, Ian Wells, and Thad Engel. Bass was second team all Mac last season. He wants to be first team this year. I'm just focused on putting forth that same energy and just not really going off of previous stuff, you know what I mean? New slate, new year, you know, when there's expectations, you know, you always got to rise to them. That's kind of where my mind's on right now. Just keep on doing what I've been doing and just keep on working at my craft. All told, Ohio had 36 sacks, allowed 19, picked off 13, and threw 14 interceptions. In the kicking game, tries for one and three were almost automatic. The punting game had issues. Talented junior college transfer Mitch Bonstetter steps in there. Josiah Yazdani went 14 for 15 in field goal attempts and was perfect in 30 PAT tries. Those numbers deserve national recognition, which he's getting, and the consistency should continue. I really worked on the same thing as consistency last season because that's the base thing when you're a kicker. Um, I was really consistent from the shorter kicks and uh, the deeper, obviously, I missed the 46 yarder, so I, uh, I've really tried to, to work on my deep kick consistency. Keeping things rolling has been what Frank Solich has done his entire career. It's year 10 at Ohio. He's four wins shy of 70 in Athens and one victory short of 125 in 16 head coaching seasons. This group is a very attentive group. They listen. They want to be great. They want to be on top of their game. And uh, so they're looking for advantages to, uh, to be that way. So that's, a, that's always a good place to, to start. So it's the same program, but a different team. Sure, there are questions. But a lot of teams across the country have questions, and it's fun knowing we'll find out the answers very soon. That's our season preview of Bobcat Football 2014. From Peden Stadium with Tanner Smith, I'm Russ Eisenstein. This is Bobcat TV.